Um, I, I might skip through some of the slides uh, relatively quickly because uh, we've uh, gone around quite a lot of the topics uh, that are happening here. But uh, basically, the purpose of uh, this presentation is to walk you through uh, the life cycle of generating a mobile payment application and what it means for the issuing bank. So there was a question earlier about are there any MNOs in the room? Are there any issuers in the room? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so basically, we're going to go through the customer journey of making a mobile payment application. And what we're going to go through is, um, in terms of strategy, we've seen a lot of the uh, uh, advantages and inconveniences of the different solutions. Um, what it means in, in terms of scope and development, we're talking about the front end. And uh, I'm going to bring a few topics related to the back end, which is very important before you actually launch your mobile payment application. There's a lot of changes that you do need to do in the background and preparation. And then there's testing and certification requirements and uh, security and risk assessments, which are absolutely necessary and mandated in order to launch your application. Um, so first thing before you even start thinking about it is um, what does the customer want? What does the end user want? And uh, we were talking about the older generation, the younger generation. One of the things that we see happening is, in the past, not everyone had a mobile phone. You go to a concert hall 15 years ago, they all have a lighter. You go today to a concert hall, they all have a mobile phone in their hands. And people are connected, and they are real-time, and they expect things to be real-time. And this is an important change factor. I look at my nephew, he's in his 20s, he's never stepped a foot in the bank. Why? Because he didn't need to. So when you look at the statistics of the increase of the transactions, which are done online compared to the ones done in the branches, this is a good insight of what the customers do and what the customers want. So we were talking about the advantages, Apple Pay being locked in, you have to go through this way, you have to go through that way. In the end, if the customer has an Apple phone, he wants his card on the Apple, now, whether you provide it or someone else provide it, he's going to get his card on the Apple phone. Um, so going digital is something that is absolutely mandatory. So we have the card present world, the card not present world, and now we're going into the non-card payments. So there's no card anymore. And we talk a lot about tokenization. It's just a little clarification that needs to be done with regards to tokenization. Because a lot of people use the word tokenization, but it means different things. So if you look at the EMV core specification, or what uh, MasterCard and Visa say, or what the uh, acquirers say, tokenization has been used before even Apple mentioned it. Tokenization was used by acquirers. For and for use. Exactly. So <laughs> just Apple manages to make things to the light a little bit better. But uh, tokenization, the way it is used, and it's just an important definition to do, is it's the sub pan that's a replacement of the card uh, pan number. So tokenization is necessary for security, but it's not sufficient. Um, the life cycle of it is important, and that's been mentioned before. Um, but the duration and the validity of it is also imp important. And it comes together with a cryptogram in order to issue the transaction. So the landscape is very fragmented, so we're going to go very quickly through that. So proximity payment is one uh, that we talk a lot about related to NFC. Um, POS devices become mobile as well. You've got the MPOS. Um, the mobile ecosystem is fragmented. You can have NFC-based. You can have Android. Uh, we haven't even talked about what Microsoft Windows is going to do about it. Um, Peer-to-peer payment is also something that is becoming uh, quite... Uh, repeatedly used in the news. Instant payment is something that people are looking at, and that's a reaction to the schemes. Um, and as an issuer bank, you're looking at what are the value-added services that you can provide on top of it. So there's a lot of um, examples. Um, some of them, you know, the sticker, NFC sticker you put on your mobile phone, is that mobile payment? Um, the band, I think, that was shown a little bit earlier, that's a different one, but the concept is the same. People tend to leave the house or leave the car without their wallet, but they always have their phone with them. There are actually situations where my wife said, you know, sometimes I don't even take my phone with me. If I could pay with my band, and then I could have an ice cream now, but she didn't have a phone, she didn't have a wallet, she didn't have an ice cream. 
if she had that, then she would have her ice cream. So these are things that need to be taken into consideration before you develop your strategy. Next slide. So assessing the impact, who are your users, what they want, um, what are they using. So if you have already your mobile uh, banking application, you already have quite a good insight on who your customers are, what they do with it. And, uh, and information is becoming the source of revenues. And we see that with Google. I mean, it's in their statement. They're an advertising company. Apple is doing the same. Um, but there's a lot of things that needs to be done. Provisioning, card profilement, uh, card management system. Uh, the there's a lot of changes that needs to be enabled in order to make this instantaneity of the payment uh, a reality. So I don't know if uh, the issuers see themselves in this picture. Uh, the customer wants Apple Pay. I have to do. I don't, whether I like it or not, it does not matter. My customer wants it. But the thing is, you can see it as a threat, but you can also see it as an opportunity. So it's bringing you to the situation where this is becoming a reality and people are actually endorsing this changing. And mobile payment applications, initiatives in the world have actually accelerated quite a lot. Now, um, the discussion about which solution is the best, is it the NFC uh, SIM-based solution, is it uh, HCE, is it uh, embedded secure element, is it TE even with Android Pay, this is an opportunity or possibility. Um, there's no definite answer, it depends on your demographics, it depends on the, your users, it depends on your situation, and it depends on what are the initiatives done within your territory. But do I have to restrict myself to only one strategy? So solutions where TSPs are providing an overall solution is actually giving an ease because they do the integration once. One of the terminologies that I heard only once uh, just in the last uh, presentation is the API. So it, this is all opening the world of the APIs. In the end, uh, as an issuer, you want to have one access to one API and then make it happen today. The official route to Apple Pay is only through MasterCard and Visa, so you have to do that integration once, and then you can actually open it to, uh, the, to the other applications and you can replicate it uh, afterwards. So in terms of uh, scope and development, uh, cloud-based mobile payment. So I'm going to skip this one because everyone knows what it means. Um, this one too. So the strategic choices that you have to make. Um, one important note was with regards to fraud and the way it's been done when Apple Pay launched in the United States. The missing link was the security in the enrollment process. So thinking through exactly the life cycle and how it's happening, MasterCard and Visa are not telling you this is how you should do the enrollment. The liability and the responsibility of enabling the card to be digitized is still in the hands of the issuer. So you have to make sure that this process is done properly. Now, my 20-year-old nephew, he's not gonna wait three days to receive the code through the post at home. So this real-timeness and also the enabling, the, the activation of this card on the phone has to be real-time as well. And um, a lot of the preparation, so if, when Apple Pay is saying we arrived in this country, um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done beforehand in order to make it available. So that there's a lot of changes required in the core banking system. You have to connect with a new host, you have to embed these new protocols, you have to prepare your customer care agents, and you have to think about all the life cycle possibilities. We talked about uh, Transport for London and how Apple Pay became a use case of the adoption of mobile payment through transport. This side has side effect where the in, in the UK now, the limit has been increased um, and the contactless adoption has been increased as well. But there are use cases which uh, came out in the news afterwards. Uh, for example, I tap in with my phone and I tap out with my watch. It's two different tokens, it's two different cards. And how do you handle these kind of situations? These are important uh, things to, uh, to consider. Testing and certification. There are testing requirements which are mandated by the schemes. If you want to put a Visa MasterCard logo, you have to go through certain 
uh, processes. There's a visa ready program, for example. And what are the systems and the tests? This is important to consider as well. So you have to uh, test the network interface. You have to test uh, the cloud-based system, uh, the mobile payment application. We're not even talking about the cloud because there is no cloud. It's just someone else's computer. You still have to make sure that it's secure. Um, and then you have to go through uh, the issuer card management system testing, authorization system testing, as well as the card profiling and the lifecycle testing. Um, we talked about interoperability, and interoperability has different <coughs> ways and meanings. So um, we've worked with a lot of, uh, most of the mobile payment uh, uh, initiatives over the past few years, and there are situations where the issuer is actually blacklisting a certain type of phone because of the interoperability issues with the POS devices. We talked about brand. I mean, brand security is something that is absolutely important, and you want to make sure that you have tested all the different um, uh, compatibilities between the mobile phones and the POS devices. Where do you put your phone? Um, is it at the right angle, in the right location, in the right position? Where is the NFC antenna? As a user, you don't think about those things. You don't care. You just want to tap pay and go. Um, but you have to take that into consideration. So that's one of the testings that we can do. Um, then also the uh, coexistence testing, which is very important. We've got situations where you've got your phone, you've got a SIM-based mobile payment application, you've got an HC one, maybe one, maybe two HC-based mobile applications, and then a secure, em embedded secure element application. Now when you go and tap how is this working? And the initiatives that we talked about in the first presentation is something that is absolutely mandatory because um, if, even if the rules are set properly, it all depends on how it's been implemented. People do implement it correctly, some people do not implement it correctly. And we got some really bad use cases um, and, and, and really bad examples where you tap, it's one application that is supposed to be taking the transaction and it's another one that takes it and you don't understand why. Um, so which one is on top of the list in your phone, especially when you do a black screen payment transaction without opening the wallet? These are things that you really definitely need to take into consideration. Um, security and risk assessment. Um, again, this is also mandated. Uh, you have to do, uh, uh, especially in the cloud-based te uh, testing and also the mobile payment application development within the phone, uh, whether you're using an SDK or you're using, uh, uh, developing your own application, you have to do some uh, penetration testing. It's an animated slide. So basically, just go through all of them. One, two, three. Yeah. And there's a couple more. One more. Okay. So um, you can have various types of attacks, and you have to consider all, all of them. And these are also specified, so uh, some of the HTE uh, uh, wallets that are coming out have a waiver from MasterCard and Visa, but in the end they have to go through the security evaluation of those. It is mandated, you cannot launch an application um, which is larger than a certain number of users if you're not doing those. So we have to do penetration testing um, and looking at the attacks, white box, cryptography, checking how vulnerable your application is. Um, tokenization has a good impact in the sense where it's reducing the impact of having the token stolen, but still your mobile application needs to be secured and this needs to be tested. And you don't forget the cloud. This is not specified by the scheme at the moment, but it's really important to make sure that the initial key that is stored in the cloud is actually secure as well. Um, so we getting to the concluding slides. Listen to your customers. Um, funnily enough, whether it's Apple, whether it's the bank, whether it's the country, it does not really matter. But when you have a message that says on your phone, your issuer does not yet offer support for this card. I mean, that says it all, right? And people are saying, you know, please, Barclays, we talk about Barclays, look at Twitter and what people are saying about it, right? So they don't understand why it's not happening and why they cannot put their Barclays card on the phone. And when they can't, they go and put some other card on the phone. Canada is the same. They start, there's even a group that got started saying we want Apple in Canada. How does UK have it even before us? 
So these are the kind of things. But if you do it right, it's in Spanish. But BBVA um, is quite innovative, uh, and they launched this remote uh, control application for the card on their mobile wallet. Basically, in real time, as a user, you can enable, disable card not present transactions. In real time, you can enable, disable uh, purchases overseas. And they're giving this feature and this functionality to the end user. Is this a security feature function? Or is it the marketing view of giving this um, feeling of being in control to the end users? And people react very positively about it. And they actually post. Twitter is usually negative feedback. And sometimes there are some positive feedbacks that come on it. But if you do it right, it actually can help your brand and can help your uh, uh, growth and new customers within the organization. Um, Last one, and so ensuring uh, payment security is one of the highest priority, and security in cloud-based payment is no exception. And this is something that is actually a word coming in a lot of different areas, whether it's from the schemes, whether it's from Apple Pay, Android Pay, um, Samsung Pay, security is something that is absolutely important and mandatory to take into consideration. But to make it a success, security is not enough. You have to think about quality. Quality encompasses security, but user experience and engagement with the user and making sure that it's easy enough to use is very important. And security is one aspect, but the whole user experience is absolutely mandatory. Without it, you're not going to get the user adoption that you're expecting. There's a situation where when you bring your mobile phone in front of the terminal, the guy is saying, oh, hold on a second, what are you going to do? Are you going to hack my system or something like that? This happened to me, uh, that's true. Um, but at the same time, I had the situation where I went to pay with my card, and I was going to put it the old-fashioned way, and the merchant took it off my hands and said, just tap and pay, and tapped on my behalf. So training and education is something that is absolutely critical in order to make it happen. Um, you can go through. Just a few words about UL. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard the name UL before, but if you look at the back of your laptop, or you look at uh, the, the power adapter of your, uh, of your laptop, you will see the UL logo right next to the CE logo. So it's a 100-year-old company. Um, it started just after the big fires of Chicago, um, and we did the investigation on why it all started. It was defective wiring, uh, electrical wiring, and since then uh, we've been creating test environments and also test labs in order to certify and verify that the things that are being sold are actually safe and secure. So the mandate is to make the world a safer place, and we actually do all the tests that are required to make sure that your mobile phone doesn't blow up to your face, that your house doesn't catch on fire, so in the physical <coughs> world. UL transaction security is bringing that physical safety into a digital security. And uh, more than words, pictures, yeah, yeah, you can go. And the video, uh, it's, it's a video, video right? actually, the previous one. Hmm? Oh, okay. You have the video? Yeah, yes, it's the separate. previous one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. I lost the video now? Yeah, it's about you all and the, uh, what we are. And the world of electronic transactions is fast changing. The number of transactions is growing. New technologies arise, creating new opportunities. As service providers innovate to serve their customers better, they are becoming more connected and more global. However, developments create new challenges and risks, requiring up-to-date knowledge, methodologies, collaboration, and experience. UL's Transaction Security Division guides companies through the fast-changing world of electronic transactions helping them during the full life cycle of their product development process or the implementation of new technologies while safeguarding security, compliance, and global interoperability. How? Around current technology developments, we offer advice and training, security evaluations, test and certification services, and test tools. We investigate the markets in which we are active we analyze trends and collaborate with industry partners around the globe to gather knowledge in order to serve our customers optimally. Rely on UL. 
We are accredited by leading industry bodies. We serve all players in the ecosystem, including the top 10 acquirers of the world. Over 500 banks, over 20 payment schemes, more than 50 governments and public transport operators, and over 60 mobile network operators. UL, committed to safeguarding security, compliance, and global interoperability. So that concludes it. Um, it's an exciting time we're living right now. There's so many initiatives around the world and so many news, and it's difficult to make the difference between what's true, what's not. Um, but we like knowledge and we like sharing that knowledge. So if you go on our website, you will see some of the initiatives that we have. Innovation seminar in Leiden next week. And we have a security seminar, uh, which is looking at mobile payment from a security perspective. And uh, mobile payment masterclass is available where you can attend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.